Saturday, November 17th. And today's edition of Sports Journal is brought to you by Michelob Light. You can have it all. Hi, I'm Linda Thompson Jenner. You know, the American dream can take on many different shapes for many different people. If you're a kid growing up in America, it might very well assume the shape of a basketball. This is the story of one such American dream, an American dream that took on a nightmarish fringe. It's not the story of a kid, but of a woman, a woman they called Machine Gun. This woman used to be the pinup star of women's professional basketball. Molly Bolin, wide open, Green Caesar, there it is. Her name is Molly Bolin. 50 points for Molly Bolin. She was known as Machine Gun Molly. Here's Molly, wide open. The purest shooter to play women's basketball. Bolin, here could be two more. When the WBL folded, she began working for a construction crew painting homes in Los Angeles. The story of Molly Bolin is not just the story of a great athlete robbed of a sport. Because of basketball, she went through a divorce, almost lost custody of her only child, left her hometown branded as a disgrace, and never gave up the dream that the game would return to her. From the very beginning, there were those who thought the Women's Basketball League was nothing more than a traveling sideshow, destined for failure. It lasted from 1977 to 1980, a victim of poor attendance and mismanagement. But the league's short life left a legacy of broken dreams, players convinced they could make the game successful and not sure where to go next. I've, I've come to a point since the last league folded that I can't get on with my life. I just can't say, okay, I'm going to put this book away and forget, you know, that was nice and it was fun and everything. I'm going to go on to something else. I've never, to this point, I haven't committed myself to anything else. This fall, a new league was formed, the WABA, and Molly found herself playing for a team called the Columbus Minx. And again, her entire life revolved around her remarkable ability to shoot a basketball through a hoop. She came from Moravia, Iowa, a farm town, population 700. In Iowa, high school girls basketball is more popular than any other sport in the state. Almost 16,000 people come every night to the state high school girls basketball tournament. And Molly was the game star. She scored 83 points in one game. She was a high school All-American. She was known statewide as Iowa's girlfriend, Moravia Molly. And even today's high school stars consider her a legend. The last game of her high school career, she scored 70 points, but her team lost. I was really upset when my high school career was over because it meant so much to me, and I just lived and died by it. And, um, you know, lose a game was the end of the world because it just meant so much. I put so much value on that that I, I couldn't give it up. In many ways, Molly symbolized the traditions of middle America. She married at age 18 to her high school sweetheart, a bricklayer. She gave birth to a child. And then her life radically changed. The Iowa Cornets of the new professional women's basketball league signed her to a $6,000 contract. That year, Molly earned the nickname Machine Gun because of the way she would score basket after basket. The 5'9 guard set 12 WBL scoring records, including a single game high of 55 points. This could be the record breaker it is! Molly became the glamour girl of the sport. Sports announcers called her the blonde bomber. I'm Molly Bullen from the Iowa Cornets. I discovered the greatest invention. She starred in basketball. hot tub commercials and was featured in posters. It was all a very heady experience for a young woman who grew up in the country. I got caught up in a lot of the um, exploitation. It was tough going into professional sports and being exposed to a lot of different things, and I got taken advantage of a lot. And of course, I learned from it. But that was only the beginning. In 1981, the Iowa Cornets folded. Soon, the rest of the league collapsed as well. Around the same time, her husband divorced her, claiming that she was abandoning her family for basketball. He sued for full custody of their son. Molly was left without a family and without a game. It fell apart. Um, the career that I never thought would end was, was over after three years. And, and then, you know, being married for five years, 
it was almost our uh, fifth year anniversary when we split up. It just, and then I didn't have a job, I didn't have a place to live, I didn't have any relationships. It, it was kind of a crazy period of time that I went through then. At the custody hearing in a small town near Moravia, attorneys claimed that Molly had neglected her duties as a mother for basketball. They said her travel schedule and flamboyant promotions through the posters were reasons in part why she was unfit to keep Damien, the child. The judge gave full custody to the father. Last year, Molly won back full custody of her son, Damien, after an appeal to the Iowa State Supreme Court. So now, in California, her life is devoted to her son and an occasional pickup game and the WABA. And even though she only has a 12.5 point average, she hopes one day the magic will return. I've always been a runner-up, never a champion. Um, I've always succeeded, but never quite the way I wanted to. And I've always had a certain level of frustration in my career that I can't give it up until I at least get that out of me or at least till I know I can't do it anymore. I mean, when I know I can go out there and I can still play ball, I want to be able to do it. Says you can't have it all. Iowa Cornette star Molly Bolin is an assistant league commissioner, and she's optimistic about the future. I really feel that there's a future for women's pro basketball, and I think the timing has, has been uh, selected uh, perfect this time, coming off a, a women's Olympic triumphs in 1984. We had the best players in the world, and I'm just very excited about the possibility of putting the best that the United States has to offer into a pro league right here in the States and not be sending our best players overseas anymore. And at Exarban, <laughs> Basketball Association. She'll be in the league's front office and feels that the game will make it this I time really around. I feel that there's a future for women's pro basketball, and I think the timing has, has been uh, selected uh, perfect this time, coming off a, a women's Olympic triumphs in 1984. We had the best players in the world, and I'm just very excited about the possibility of putting the best that the United States has to offer into a pro league right here in the States and not be sending our best players overseas anymore. And the key player for...